March on Washington, there were, was an organizing team known as the Big Six. And one of the organizations that was the Big Six was the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And we are so fortunate that I think that our local chapter is going through a revival. Uh, it's being re-energized, reinvigorated. And so I'd like to bring to the podium the sister who is bringing some energy to our local chapter, uh, Audrey Terrell, and her young first vice president, Tony.
we are going to fight and work more vigorously than ever before. Yes. The civil rights movement has been re-energized, but we have to know our history to dictate and seek our future. The 1963 march in Washington was our pattern. We must honor those who gave us direction. We remember their efforts so we can replicate their work. Most importantly, most importantly, we can duplicate the enthusiasm to be steadfast warriors in the battle for social justice, freedom, and equality. Let me just say this. I'm a sister. Okay, I'm a sister that benefited from the civil rights movement. Okay? And I was advanced. I advanced because of what they had done for me. The work, the die, the struggle, the fight, the hustle, the everything they were doing while I was picking cotton in South Texas. Pick cotton, but now worked through to get a college degree. Came in at General Motors, but ended as an executive, uh, international executive. So all I say to you today, I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road was going to be easy. But I don't believe he brought me this far. And one last thing before I give it to my vice president, I've been running a long time. And I'm not tired yet. I've been fighting a long time. And I'm not tired yet. I've been singing a long time. And I'm not tired yet. I've been running and running and running and running. And I'm not tired yet. Today I stand in this very esteemed position. I stand not alone, but in the shadows of a great many champions who have helped pave the way that my voice may be heard. Today I use my liberated voice to speak to you with compassion, concern, and with a challenge. Today, along with many other social justice advocates, we have marched for freedom, we have marched for justice, we have marched for equity and equality. Today we declare with the rest of the nation that these issues of injustice, 50 years later after the first march, are still prevalent and require our attention. 50 years ago a dream was declared that our nation would grow, heal, and change into a better place for all mankind. While we have made some strides along the way, we definitely still have a long way to go. So my question today is, how long must the black man dream to be free from oppression? How long must women dream to be seen as equals? How long must our friends in the LGBTQ community dream to be able to freely love? How long must Americans dream of affordable health care? How long must Americans dream for equal access? How long must we dream for jobs? How long will we remain asleep? Justice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And wake up to the fact that we must become that beloved community that Dr. Martin Luther King spoke of, where we strive together for the freedoms and equality that this lying country has promised us. Our challenge today is to question the morality of drones being dropped on our question today is to challenge an imaginary border against the people who never crossed the border but have been double crossed by the border. Our question today is to question the oppressive system that has re enslaved the black community called the American criminal justice system. Our challenge today is to dismantle discriminatory laws and practices that have allowed it to be open season on young children of color where they are denied education, locked out of opportunities to employment, victimized and murdered in the streets of America. Our challenge today is to
ensure that the right to vote be heard, be protected, and fought for where needed. We must challenge the question and change the unjust. We can no longer dream of a better tomorrow. We must awaken our consciousness, awaken our convictions, and awaken our commitment to creating a better today. The time for dreaming is over. This nightmare we've been living is over. Our tomorrow begins today. Wake up! Wake up! I want to be comfortable. Now I see why I want to be comfortable. Yes. 